Hey, what's going on, man? <clears throat> Damn, I forgot I could do it like this. Uh, so I'll do it like this. I know a lot of people have been wondering where I was at. I actually did a video August 4th. It was supposed to go on uh, Rumble, but I just didn't get around doing it, doing it because I had to uh, redo my computer. I definitely had somebody spying on the system. But, and I could tell that because uh, certain functions kept popping up on the screen that I wasn't using. And there was no way to get rid of them. So I said, okay, let me just redo the whole computer. And I still didn't put the uh, <laughs> video software back up. I did reinstall the OBS Studio. I might try to mess with that again. I don't know, a lot of people may remember when I first went live, that was the first thing I used, the OBS Studio. Then I tried to abandon it because um, I didn't think it was fast enough because you kind of had to program the damn thing to get into what you wanted to talk about as opposed to being able to just pull everything up on the fly like I prefer. But, um, yeah, I mean, I more or less... Let me tell you this. <clears throat> I basically got tired of dealing with YouTube because, you, you know, you're dealing with agents, coon agents that just, you know, they're masters. They got more money than I could ever hope to have so they can keep paying these people their little bit of money uh, to coon out, you know, and uh, no matter how many times you educate them with the evidence it's denial 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 then they stick to that same story with tons of lies i'm like these people will never tell the truth no matter what some like to just keep you on uh shows talking you to death because they make money off of the views and then of course people like me i can't make a dime off of the goddamn views these other people, that's how you know their ages. I've been telling you this for years, really. They call people nigger every day, call people this, that. When I, you could tell, when they lie and say they're not monetized, but you could tell when they're monetized, like I said, is when they get the super chats. Now, some people are claiming that some people are getting demonetized, and uh, I guess they'll give up after a while, but... Could be a ploy as well, but like I said, whenever you see super chats, they're monetized. That's the bottom line. So that combined with the fact that it's frustrating. I mean, you know, I got a lot of patience, but you know, you think that when you are out, to, you, you can show improve. Tyron shows improves. Everybody else, they show they can show improve. But people dismiss whatever that you know how they say they say source up. You source up, they just deny it all. They deny what their eyes are seeing. And then they just stick to the same old uh bullshit. Like North Africa was always white. Uh Horn Africans, they're not black. Mulattoes are uh, <laughs> not black. The offspring of black. Uh, if you're three quarters black, you're black. But yet, if the quarter, other quarter is white, now we don't count it. <laughs> I mean, this is some absolute nonsense. I mean, you you you're like, damn! You teach the people, you show them. Talk about languages, you talk about this, you talk about that. Then after a while, you realize, you know what, man? We just dealing with coon agents. Either they're fucking mentally ill. They're stupid. They're doing drugs or they're coon agents. I just get tired. I, I, I got fed up. And then on top of that, I had to redo the computer. So, you know, I didn't get around to reinstalling the software. Now, I, 
obviously if this is on, I, I should have reinstalled uh, the software. So, you know, I was just pissed off with that shit. You know, I was still going on other people's shows trying to explain things, but then some people become more extremists and you got to give them the Michi X test all the time. You know, you give them the gay test, the Jew test, uh, the Michi X test, and the Louis Farrakhan test. If you find that they cannot go against these people or groups, you know what the deal is. Speaking of Michi X, I see when Side Nutter got pissed off with her. Now, all of a sudden, she's a cracker. I've been telling her. And we know she slept with Tommy because she didn't say she didn't. She just said, we're adults. I'm an adult. I can do what I want to do. But she doesn't want to see. She doesn't want to say, yeah, I did it. Tommy knows what it's about because I used to hang with some rich guys. And rich guys know that hoes are after them for their money. That's why they know they can get what they want to get. Because these hoes are trying to get what they're trying to get. But they can't let the hoes know. <laughs> That they know what you're trying to do. Because everybody else is trying to get a piece of their money. So that's no surprise to anybody. Because you know we we know how Tommy gets down. And I told you I could tell what kind of woman Michi X is. And she is an adult. But at the same time see she lacks integrity. Because she didn't say yeah I did it. She should have known that a guy like him was going to tell any goddamn way. <laughs> But, um, you know, her cohorts, every time, they talk about mulattoes ain't black. Uh, it seems to be every mulatto but Michi X. And then when you ask them the question, is Michi X black? They can't answer. They refuse to answer. Because you know what the answer has to be. You know what it has to be. So that's why they refuse to answer. Um, she said she was giving up on this black power shit. But I knew she was full of shit. Because this is how she gets paid hustling. So as soon as she said she gives up, then she did a video in her bed with her shirt off or making it seem like her shirt was off trying to sell fat sex <laughs> and um because she knows people say oh you're so cute Michi X so you knew she had to come back because her target audience are black people niggers as she says she can't push her products without us same thing with Tariq Nasheed, just like a uh, keyboard musician used to say. Tariq Nasheed would do the documentary, have it finished, then do the GoFundMe to get money. He said money back, but in this case, it's to get profits. His money back plus profits before the so-called movie comes out because he may not sell anything on the movie, period. So he'll get whatever money he can get. Remember, he wants the movie theater and the uh, so-called museum. So that way he can have an opening night and get paid movie ticket prices, if not more. But he can't do that. So he always did the GoFundMe thing to get paid. Then sell the shit. And keep in mind, he only switched to Blu-ray because I told him to. Now, I do not I do take offense to some people saying DVDs are old. And Blu-ray and DVD are the same. No, they're not. They're not the same. So we got to stop that shit. DVDs are old school. I don't deal with DVDs. The only titles I got on DVD are shit that won't be coming out on Blu-ray. Mainly because they're controversial. <laughs> or if they're, they were recorded on video. You know, video from uh, SD quality video. Because you can't really scale that 
too much on uh, to HD because it, you know, it's like 480p uh, is, is the best that it could do unless they got some new shit out. Um, even though some of them, some of the new ones that I'm starting to see, like when you watch forensic files on YouTube and that's just from streaming, it goes to show that some of the shit, they can improve it to a degree if they, if they really uh, try but Blu-ray and 4K, that's a different animal. That ain't DVD. I told you DVD, that's designed for the tube TVs. That's not designed for your flat screen HD. That's why Blu-rays still look good. But he should have been having the shit in Blu-ray years ago if he claimed that he was uh, filming it on the top quality cameras. Now, I will give it up to, uh, to Harker Bay because he did show that he gets a renter crew with their own equipment. Because you know professional film cameras cost a lot of money. Professional kind. So sometimes it's just cheaper to get somebody with their own little production crew. Um, but this is what these guys do. He needs the black audience too to sell his deodorant. Like I said, he only... He peddles all his materials through going live. That's the primary reason he goes live... Is to keep you tuned in so he can keep hitting you up like clockwork for the next money. He didn't deliver on the museum. He even said he was going to take some of the money from the museum and buy a house with it to rent out the Airbnb. Why would you do that if the money was for the museum? But he took it out for this mic check shit because he knew the shit was coming. Now, out of all the shit he made, I don't, I gotta admit, you know, I didn't see it. I gotta see the quality looking at his other shit. It's gonna be basic quality. But I will say this might be something that is actually useful this time around. Cause buck breaking, it definitely wasn't useful. <laughs> I still didn't see the 1804. Can't get a hold of that one. Somebody can get a hold of that one. Let me know. And the Maroons too. Just so I can see, even though you know it's just going to tell like uh, somebody telling a story just like I'm talking to you right now. <laughs> uh, so we'll see how that comes out now. You got some people now, Taharka Bay was hating. I don't know what his problem is. It's just like Brandon, they kind of hate on black Americans and they want to promote everybody else but hate on us because he... Instead of just talking about the hip hop, he wants to say that black Americans didn't create the hip hop or who cares. Now, these Morris guys, they're not Pan-Africans. Now, if you notice, I was on that show with that Dr. Cologne. I was actually going to go deeper into the situation. And I might put the thing up here. Now, he said you can share his videos. That's what he said. But just the same, I'm going to only share the audio part because you know how people do. <laughs> so they, they say one thing right now, then when they get pissed off or, they, or whatever, then it's like, oh, no, nah, I, ain't, I ain't say you could do that. But that Dr. Cologne, I was going to go in deeper with that guy because only only reason I didn't, I, I went in deep enough and I know Tariq was listening, so he got some tips. But because, you know, some of these hosts, they got itchy uh, trigger fingers. As soon as you say something that might be too good, it, it, then all of a sudden it's like you're being disrespectful. I was surprised the Harker Bay let me roll. But I, still, I was still cautious. And note, for people who watch my past videos, notice how he knew who I was too, by the way. <laughs> But you notice how I didn't take it to where I could have taken it because I was focused on the topic at hand. Because that, that Puerto Rican guy, I had to let him know something. And by sheer coincidence, I swear to you, it's the coincidences of all coincidences. I put stuff on my phone to listen to in the car. And that, uh, what is it, the uh, Funky 4 Plus One More rapping rock in the house. That just happened to play because I, I like uh, what they call it uh, random. I, I randomized the tracks. 
so I don't know what's coming. Cause all genres. That song just happened to come up early in that day. And I said, you know what? This is a song I never really listened to like that. So I said, you know what? Let me hear this shit. Let's see what this is all about. And it's just funny how Cologne mentioned that same song. And I know he mentioned it because he probably figured nobody in the audience knew about that. But I just happened to listen to it that same day. So he couldn't play me with the music. Because as I was listening to the song, I kept saying to myself, damn, that's a disco beat. And then I didn't know I was going to be on that Taharka Bay. I didn't know that Cologne was going to be on there. And I didn't know that Taharka Bay was going to let anybody on because he usually doesn't. So I had to take my man to school. And then, of course, you had another guy who claimed to be from the Bronx. He asked me what part of the Bronx I'm from. See, you got to understand, I know that there's at least two, if not three, coons who, who are potentially dangerous out here. At least three. I, I know what they do and what they think, so that's why I can't keep dropping clues. Because, you, you, I mean, people got to understand, it's like a woman, when, when they're trying to lead that man that, that hit them, and they're trying to, they won't leave them alone. You can't just live your life carefree. Unfortunately, you got to make sure that you watch your step and maneuver as if these people are on the prowl at all times. And believe me, it's not about not showing my face and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, that guy kept interrupting the flow. And, and you, you get that on these shows. There's always somebody trying to interrupt something because they don't want shit out. So hopefully he'll have that guy back. And I, I wonder how maybe I might try to get him on my show. But he might leave if he comes on my show. Because you know me. I'm going to keep. I'm going to wear him out. But. I asked. You'll see it. I asked him uh, if you didn't see it already. You know, I asked the guy a whole bunch of questions. See, I see when you been to college, you know what these PhDs are all about. This is just another PhD bullshit topic to also make money. That's all that shit is. It's all fake. See, he didn't understand who he was talking to. I was going to call him out, but we'll see if Taraka Bay lets me get back on there again with that. And I don't know why Taharka Bay was surprised that I was respectful. Tyron, everybody knows when I go on other people's shows, I obey their rules. I'm totally respectful. They get mad, really, when too much truth comes out. And if I happen to challenge lies that I'm hearing, then that's, that's what they don't like. That's what they start calling disrespect. That's not disrespect. That's the way it is. So that's what I've been doing, going on other people's channels. Sidenetter still won't let me on. Uh, his bullshit cam up uh, bullshit. That's that's some uh, coon agent shit. Camming up. Fuck you need to cam up to you for you ain't nobody. <laughs> cam up. Fuck you need to see people's faces for. Same thing with the uh, Frenchman. Fuck you need to see people's faces for. You're all the way in Europe. The hell are you worried about people's faces for? Speaking of that situation, this is more or less a recap since I haven't been around. I think I'll be doing more now. I got some new neighbors that just moved in, some white people. And uh I see how thin the walls are now. <laughs> so I don't want to hear them. I can't, that's why I can't be screaming and yelling at people. When I'm on these shows, that's why you notice when people start screaming and yelling. I just can't engage with that kind of shit. Telling people, hey, let me speak. That's why I just get away. Because I don't, I don't want to turn it into that type of situation. But I hear what they do. Apparently the guy is a one minute man. And I swear today I heard that dog 
I ain't gonna say nothing, but it sounded <laughs> sound like he was messing with the dog. I think he got a woman in there too. Motherfuckers don't seem to. They, they watch TV and movies all fucking day and night, man. I'm like, motherfucker, they they say black people do that kind of shit, huh? Shit. I'm like, God damn, can 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 people sleep at some fucking time? I got a lot of movies. I don't even watch them like that. Speaking of movies. I did find another old school movie that I became aware of. It's called Peeping Tom. 1960. They said that's the first, probably the first horror movie made, but it's more realistic, psychological horror. And it's in color, too. From 1960, I finally got a hold of that. I ain't watched it yet, but it does look creepy. British uh, movie. Uh, I first downloaded it. I thought I had it, but I started watching the movie because I said, damn, it sounded pretty intriguing. So I said, man and the woman. Next thing I know, the man drops his pants. I'm like, damn. I said, I know this is 1960, but I didn't know they did it like that in 1960. And then I said, how far are they going to go with this? So then I see the man's penis and balls. I'm like, damn, that's going pretty far. I'm like, damn, I said, what what, what part of the peeping time is this? Because I'm like, man, the, the whole, they didn't set the whole story up right. I'm like, I thought it was about a serial killer. So then I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, I mean, I don't know what this is all about. Next thing I know, the lady sucking the man's penis. <laughs> I'm like, damn, they did this shit in 1960? <laughs> but then again, if you go on certain sites, you'll see porn from the motherfucking 1920s. And you'll say, damn, people are so so fucking disgusting. Back in the 1920s, even before sound, they made pornos. Matter of fact, I think they made them in the 1800s too. Nasty ass people. Anyway, so the guy said to the lady, your cunt smells. But he was still doing what he was doing. I was saying to myself, man, what, what kind of movie is this? So then next thing I know, I saw a penetration. I said, man, can't, this can't be the movie. Cause if that's the case, this shit don't sound right. This shit doesn't sound intriguing. So then that's when I looked again. I said, oh, this is 1976. The movie I'm looking for is from 1960. So I had to go go search again. These these sites, they're they picking up the slack from the other site that... um. Had to go down to R A R B G. Now they're getting their shit together. So now I have to keep on buying shit. Uh, I can keep downloading movies again. Can't find them all like I used to find them, but I'm finding most of them. Like I'm downloading that was that Ashanka, the the Star Wars one. That's downloading as we speak. So Peeping Tom, the real one from 1960. It's just intriguing to see something in 1960 in color, you know, so you get a better idea how the times were. Like if you go on YouTube, I found a uh, somebody made some home movies from the New York's 1964 World's Fair. I'm like, damn, did they tear everything down? I, I mean, was it only for the World's Fair? Cause I, all that kind of shit I don't see anymore. But uh, it's in color. Shows black people walking around with white people. And I said, damn, 1964. It really opened your eyes to the time. And you can see that some of the clothes in 1964. You can see how they set the stage for the late 60s and early 70s. Wild. And I see why they came up with the phrase out of sight. Because <laughs> that's damn sure what those clothes were. Those clothes are out of sight. God damn. Make you go blind. And it almost didn't look like 1964 because it's so fucking clear and colorful. Until you saw the cars on display, you're like, damn, yeah, that's the old school. You see the black uh, girl serving the ice cream. I'm like, damn. If she's still alive, she's up there. Then they went into some movie theater. 
And that's what reminded you that it was 1964, the guy filming the shit. I think he was a small hat because you could tell by their, their features and stuff. Uh, all the film footage in the theater was black and white. Some specialized film. I said, damn, they couldn't put, put that in color? But that was intriguing to see. But anyway. So I'll probably be doing it like this again. Uh, live. I can't say. I gotta get me some soundproofing stuff. I see a lot of people buying soundproofing shit for their apartments because you. I, I see you need these things. I mean, I got a little bit for the surround sound. Now I gotta put some on the motherfucking ceiling now for these motherfuckers on top. Motherfuckers make all that noise and then I play one motherfucking movie. They they want to stop and shit. Speaking of movies, what else did I watch? Damn, I forgot what I watched. Uh, oh, yeah, that Rambo. Finally got around to watching that shit. One from 2008. I still think it's crazy. You look at uh, Stallone from Rambo back in the 80s. I think the other one came out in the 90s. I don't know. I think it was all 80s. 83 to 89, I think. You look at his build back then in his 30s. You look at his build in, in his 70s. You know the man is roided out because how the fuck is a man going to be almost twice as muscular in his fucking 70s as he was in his motherfucking 30s? That shit ain't possible. That movie... See, that's why it took me so long to watch that shit. I mean, it was all right, but it wasn't really spectacular. And I'll be honest with you, I only like the first Rambo. And they could have ended it right there. I didn't like the way they try to make him wear the uh, transient clothes that he wore in the first one. I mean, at some point in time, Stallone has to act his age and understand that he's a motherfucking senior citizen. I mean, goddamn. Motherfucker want to be an action hero until he dies, like Charles Bronson. But at least Charles Bronson wasn't deluding himself <laughs> into thinking that he was the fucking bodybuilder. So you don't see Schwarzenegger doing that shit. Schwarzenegger more or less left the steroids alone. You can tell because his muscles shrink. So he's not doing all that shit. Now I got the other Rambo with the Mexicans. That's what they keep doing. That's why I made that video, the Mexican handoff, because that's what they keep trying to do. Trying to make these Mexicans cool. Well, they, they can't be cool. They try to force them in every fucking movie like that Blue Beetle. That's another one I should download. And that Flash. I think the, the main guy was a small hat. But as you can see, he looked like a Mexican. He could have been a Mexican too. I didn't watch that yet because um, got to see the other ones first. But the DC, they fucking up. They even admit that they fucked up doing what they did. But the bad boys, what is it, four or three? Mexican handoff. Black people, you got to stop doing this shit. And that's another thing you could tell about these coon agents, too. They always talk about topics that they're supposed to talk about. Like the Jada and Will Smith shit. Who gives a fuck about their relationship? They're entertainers. Everything they do and say is in front of a camera for effect. They're ordered to do what they do. Who gives a fuck if she didn't fuck with him in 10 years? A website called Hollywood Street King that I used to frequent back in the day. I forgot what years they were, but I think it was when Guru, right before Guru died, I discovered that website and I said, damn, they're telling it all. And to the point that celebrities, they, they, they wanted that guy's head, some Canadian guy who moved to Hollywood. Jackie Jasper. Then after a while, I guess he sold the site and then they just kept it inactive. And then late, lately they've been picking up again. So a lot of people just moved on from the site because there was nothing going on. But that was a that was a site. And he got information, man. He had information. So now he, he, I knew he had to comment on the Tupac and the uh, Jada Smith. You know, that site was the site that always said that Will Smith was gay with that Dwayne, uh, whatever his name was. 
the uh, <laughs> husband, a former husband of uh, yeah, I forgot the other lady, fuck, you know, the Martin lady. He had that on his site on a daily basis. So you could tell. And he had he had information on the shit, too. He, I mean, he had a lot of information. With receipts, as they say. So she's coming up just when this Tupac bullshit is coming up. I knew when you go on YouTube, you kept seeing all these Tupac interviews and Biggie shit. I said, man, what, what's this all about? Why do they keep talking about this? And then you see what happened. So that's how you knew they were pre preparing your mind for the shit. Always got to blame it on a black man, of course. Let me tell you something, man. I don't know what this is going to result in. He might end up dead. Or what have you. That guy didn't do that shit. Why well, you think everybody else is dead? From my research with the JFK assassination, which, which leads you into other assassinations, FBI tactics, CIA tactics on, on assassinations, the Tupac and Biggie murders, those were professional hits. That wasn't street thug shit. The fight at the casino, that's, that's the visual excuse for the uh, public. And there are a lot of stupid people, along with support agents that say, yeah, this is how it happened, who believe that shit. So he's this Orlando Anderson supposed to have killed him. Then, of course, got killed himself. There was some other documentary that came out that I didn't even know about until this news broke again. I think it came out in 17. I watched this on YouTube. I forgot the name of the shit. But all that shit was was propaganda to take it away from a professional hit, Illuminati and all that kind of shit. Street thugs, as you know, don't know how to assassinate anybody. They just know how to bust their guns. Even cops, you watch these cop videos on, on these real cop videos. Even the motherfucking police. Most of them don't know how to just target one person. They magazine dump. And when you watch these thugs versus the police. Thugs miss every damn thing. <laughs> So you got two rappers who got killed in a car and nobody else gets uh, killed by accident. I know you got the superficial Suge Knight shot to the head. Just like the JFK assassination. A moving car supposedly done by Oswald, who never tried this shit before, keep that in mind, just said, hey, I, I'm in the mood to kill the president today. Gets a gun, waits for him to come by, that doesn't even sound like a good excuse. Uh, make sure the president's hit, hits kindly by mistake. That's a clean professional assassination. When nobody else gets hit, I know Conley got hit, but that was by accident. But he wasn't killed. That's the key thing. But that was by accident. That's a professional hit. The Tupac and Biggie hits were set up in the same way so that their cars were in the procession so that they could not escape. Even if the driver who may or may not have been in on the plot uh, in each of those cars made an attempt to escape. They couldn't get out. And it was set up so that the uh, assassin's car can come up and hit the target. And they, they just happen to be on the right, in the right position because obviously for the setup, the, you know, they had to have these guys in the front right seat front passenger seat now normally celebrities are chauffeured around there in the back 
it's harder to hit somebody in the back, especially if they're in the back driver's side seat. And especially the way the roads are in this country. That's why they do that that way. So they can take them out and only them. Now with the biggie thing, the only risk that they had to take was that those bullets didn't penetrate the back. But I guess Biggie's size, you know, that helped that. Keep that in check. Tupac, just study assassinations. I, I know most of you won't. Some of you have. It's the same setup. That's why people who know these things, we already know this is some government shit. And we know the Nation of Islam are coons for the government. They try to take the heat off of them. All the witnesses said that it was a nation of Islam, man. And we know they're about assassinating black people. Again, it's about taking the heat off of them and Farrakhan. Because those are their coons. And they got to have people still act like they believe in them. And like they're doing something. That's why all the coon agents, regardless of their supposed religion... They never put down Farrakhan. They always say, oh yeah, Farrakhan is cool. He's, he's a rider. He's a killer. The man is on his way out. They defend him. Like I said, the media, they call Hezbollah terrorists. But they never arrested Farrakhan for anything. They do that with other people, athletes, uh, whoever else to send the message. Better keep your ass in line. But Farrakhan is the dedicated uh, boy. So hands off Farrakhan. That's how you could tell the coon agents. Whenever you suspect that you're dealing with a coon agent, ask them about Farrakhan, small hats, homosexuals, and Michi X. Ask them if Michius X is black. And if they say she's mixed, then tell them, oh, I guess that means no, right? I mean, you got to be an idiot to think that you got a Polish black power champion of black people. That the Nepal Shaddad thinks she took the video down. I, I should have recorded, but I'm not one who likes keeping their videos because, you know, that takes up too much uh, space in the hard drive. I ain't putting no money into their shit. But she was surprisingly funny. The way she did Michi X's voice, she should have kept that shit up because that shit was her. Normally, Nepal Shaddad is born as a motherfucker. If she ain't showing no titties. She, I mean, nobody's interested in what she has to say. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> She is boring, but she, I, I was surprised that she was actually funny. Hell, she's funnier than Michi X. The way she did her voice. <laughs> that shit was funny. And when she had that picture up there, I was like, who the fuck is that supposed to be? Then once I found out it was Michi X, I said, damn, that shit is really funny then. <laughs> but she took it down. That's why I hate dealing with these motherfuckers, man. They, they put shit up. Then take them down. I mean, man, you gonna put the shit up? Keep the shit up. That's the one thing I can say about Meatball, man. And uh, somebody else. I forgot who the other person was. I know it ain't, it ain't the French man, is it? No. Could be forecast. Somebody else, whatever, whoever it was. When they put shit up, they keep the shit up. Keep it up. Cause that was her funniest shit. Um, I'm also I, I ain't looking for an engagement, but I'm gonna just say this, only because the video came up with that sister Nandy with the uh, her bugging on the train and getting arrested. I said, damn, she's one of those kind of people, huh? So it's crazy. A lot of shit's been going on. Uh. Oh yeah, wear condors 
Fly, I think that's the name of the movie, with Robert Redford. That was another one I watched, a spy thriller. That was pretty good. Uh, just popped into my head some other shit. I've been getting back into these 60s and 70s movies. But that was about uh, CIA type of uh, shit. How they change shit around and kill you after uh, they're done with you. But I've been getting into that kind of uh, shit lately. What else did I download? It was a 4K Megan. Uh, yeah, I got to see that one. And uh, something else. I forgot what, it, what the fuck it was. But I've been getting into <laughs> these movies. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. To Live and Die in L.A. That was one that I saw. I don't know if I said this in the last video or not. Then again, it's been a long time, so I don't know. Probably didn't. But um, that was a movie I heard about. I thought it was from the 90s, but it turns out it was from the 80s. That one was actually a very good movie. It was unpredictable. When you thought it was going to be predictable. And the ending. Was unexpected. But when you see the ending. Then you realize them. Now I see why they call it to live and die in LA. And it was kind of funny in a way. <laughs> but um. Yeah that's about it. But I know some ideas have uh, come into my mind about some things. I'm going uh, to investigate further in the ideas. I ain't going to say it until I know what's up. But one of these YouTubers inadvertently gave me some ideas. And it's the kind that don't want to give away shit for free. But that person inadvertently gave me something to go on. They don't know it, and I'm not going to say who it was, but that's going to be something that, that might work out for me, depending on the structure. So, we'll look out for all that kind of shit. <clears throat> and, uh, oh yeah, I didn't install my fonts back either. So, when you see this video, there ain't no telling what kind of font I use. That's the other thing I hate most is when I redo the computer, I got to reinstall all these fucking fonts. I mean, we're talking like nearly 100,000 fonts. Even though my computer is powerful, I still got to do them not one by one, but folder by folder. And the way I got to put them, I can't necessarily put select all. Because for some odd reason, when you select all, it just won't hit them all. You got to like select maybe 30, 40, up to 100 at a time, I guess, or something like that. So it takes time. That's another reason why I hate when it's time to reinstall everything, wipe the hard drive. That's why I hate doing that shit. Because I got to reinstall the fonts, reinstall the browser tabs. And for some odd reason, this fucking video game, man, this is frustrating. I was telling you about the Bioshock games that I was just getting into uh, recently. And I do like the first two. They're, they're fucking creepy. <laughs> I never played video games before where, you know, they actually get you a little concerned. You're like, God damn, this shit is kind of scary. So I played the first two. I love those, man. I want I want them to make some more now. And then I started playing Bioshock Infinite because uh, Epic gave them away for free. So so I, I got through the fucking <laughs> intro, which is kind of long. I hate games when they take ninety nine years to just get to it. So you got to sit back and watch every goddamn thing or keep moving before you can save the game and all that kind of shit. So I do that past the, I don't want to say first stage, but you know, it's enough action to make you say, damn, I don't want to go through that shit again. 
Epic's supposed to save automatically. Start the game up. Gotta start all over again. Nothing to say. I said, damn. So that pissed me the fuck off. But at the same time, it's been so long since I played the game. I guess I might as well start from the beginning. And I got a 1440p monitor. I know that's an older game. But it won't play. It won't display full screen at 1440p. So I got to put the shit at 4K. Or 1080. That's stupid. But you get what you pay for. So, you know, it is what it is. And, um... Oh, yeah, with that slow leak, uh, I had an attire, too. That shit finally said, fuck it, let me get me some new tires. Because winter's coming up. I said, fuck that. Got time for no goddamn slow leaks. Had to get a whole new set of tires. I forgot to ask for my other tires because the other three were pretty good. But could have... Sold those. I know that's what they did. So I got some general tires, and those those are very good tires. I already feel the difference. My car is kicking ass on the road now with supreme stability, because these are supposed to be ultra high performance tires, racing style. But all season though. <clears throat> um. So other than that. You know, everything is cool. Man, you know, I was just pissed off with these coon agents. Maybe I needed to take a break. But you go from one show to the next. All they're really trying to do is keep you talking. <laughs> they're not really looking for resolution. They tell you to source up. When you source up, the only thing they're trying to do is figure out what kind of lies they could tell, like a defense attorney for a murder uh, uh, client. What kind of lies can I tell? They don't give a damn about your source. They just try to discredit the source. Oh, the source is old. Oh, it's a drawing. It's a cartoon. What do you expect for them to have in the 1600s? But then they expect for you to buy their sources. Oh, well, the ship manifest said that they had this, they had that. The Clotilde, you can see it. But you can't see nothing. And if, even if you could, it wasn't no enough to hold no slave ship. It was a cargo ship. That's why. Is that so? Then you, when you explain to them, because they always say slavery was the biggest business in the world. Why wouldn't they have made specialized slave ships for the biggest business in the world? They got electric cars, specialized cars, because the oil is running out. <laughs> the oil is running out. Shit is going to be crazy. But these other YouTubers, coon agents out here, the ones with assumed identities and criminal records. They're always trying to make you paranoid, thinking that everything is a conspiracy. But even when it is a conspiracy, they want you thinking it's a con conspiracy about something else. Like you had Dick Gregory, coon agent. He was connected with people or events. I always used to ask myself, why is this guy talking to us about this, that, and the other, which is usually a conspiracy, or don't do this, do that, look out for this, be paranoid. Why are they always talking to us? Why is free? Why are the Freemasons always targeting us? And that's what I said. Now, who's the black ones? You got Shannon Sharp wearing makeup and lipstick and white uh, glasses, looking uh, uh, like he's ready for the. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Studio 54 or some shit. Uh, and then, of course, you know, they make the excuse that the makeup artist overdid it. Well, how come he wore funny man glasses to go with the shit? And lipstick. Shannon Sharp 
not only has eyes, but he has glasses on. So I'm sure he can look in the mirror as they're doing the makeup and say, what the, what the fuck is going on here? What is this? <laughs> but instead, he approved because you know how it is. It's rituals. He had to do it. Just like uh, Jimmy Butler with that hairdo. Dwayne Wade. Magic Johnson. See, they make the black athletes do these things. I, I haven't seen Tom Brady doing anything fruity except kiss his tongue, uh, kiss his son on the lips. They don't make white athletes do this shit, but black Negroes do. See, that's why I always say you take away sports and entertainment. Where are we making millions of dollars at? And they can't even invest in big business to be a major player. Instead, they got to just buy homes and cars and clothes and brag. They can't invest in. So to become a major player in the rich world. You got to have. Your family or yourself, you got to have some type of hook. Let's say if you decided to come out with uh, little Jimmy's bagels and they become the go to bagel. Now you got something as long as you don't sell it. Scott Tissue. Walmart. You know, shit like that. Just being rich, just having money, just to live, that ain't doing nothing. You got to have something that affects lives. That controls an industry. The only thing that these Negroes had was sports and music. Not even movies. Matter of fact, these motherfuckers got enough to make movies and be in the movie industry. How come it's only Tyler Perry with his cheap ass movies? And that shit has been slowing down. Motherfuckers, if you got a hundred million dollars, you know you got enough to buy you a, a fucking skyscraper, even if it's only 20, 30 stories, somewhere. Apartment building, uh, office building. These motherfuckers don't do that. I mean, the music biz is dead. Everything else is a fucking illusion. You can't do nothing with the music business. It's dead. That's why the artists are selling their whole catalog and careers. Because the record labels realize, damn, we keep paying these mo motherfuckers money all the fucking time. And we're not really bringing much in. It's going to be rough. So they just have them. Sell their whole catalogs and shit. Now the record labels. Totally own that artist and everything that they made. And now whatever money they make. It stays with them. Because they're trying to keep the shit alive. It's hard to do. Because. People like me. Shit, there ain't too many new albums out that I said I got to get. And you saw that Quavo going to the White House, you know. My man got killed. Now, you, we already knew. He was going to be doing bigger and better things. And it's the same story, man. It's the same story. But these Negroes, all they do is flaunt shit. But they don't own shit. At least make some fucking movies. I mean, we shouldn't have to be relying on Tyler Perry's movies. I'm sure other people got ideas for movies that they want to make. The only other movies we ever been able to make were fucking hood movies. I mean, damn. We can use some movies right now because all they're doing is putting a Mexican in every fucking movie. Oh, that's the other movie I was talking about. That Shazam part two. That turned into some Mexican bullshit too. I said, man, damn. I mean, they really force them on us. They force them on us. We had the appeal because we're cool and innovative and creative. But these Mexicans truly offer nothing. I mean, really, they, they truly offer nothing. And then on top of that, they only want Mexicans of a certain hue. And they, they make them all the same color. But when you walk on the streets, you see Mexicans darker than you. 
And you're like, how come they don't want to put them in the movies? Now that Will Smith is Mexican son, <laughs> if that's what they want us to believe, and that Bad Boys, since Will Smith is light, theoretically, that Mexican son should have been darker. You see in the NFL and NBA, they like talking about uh, black guys who's half Hispanic or something like that shit. And, and, you know, it's like crazy, man. It's like um, Hispanic Heritage Month. But they don't celebrate us. I mean, motherfucker, if these motherfucking Hispanics were not half black, they would be physically unable to play in the NBA or the NFL. But this is how the small hats want to uh, do it. If Negroes had half a brain, they would be saying, why are we getting replaced? And how come these people are being forced upon society in positive ways and taking over movies that black people used to run? But we're being shit on. Now, if the Freemason Society <laughs> told these Negroes, hey, man, we, we dealing with this we are the world shit. We got to spread everything around. And then we can work for the brotherhood. Then you'll get your turn. Do you ever ask these motherfuckers, why are we last? <laughs> How can we get last service? You ever been to a motherfucking buffet? <laughs> when motherfuckers grabbed everything first and you're left with fucking scraps and dried shit? Getting the last shit ain't good. You know getting the first shit is usually the best way to go. Sometimes it's the middle shit too, though. <laughs> but... That's how they do. They put people into the uh, into our world, whether it's public access or uh, internet, videotape lectures. They do that to us. Like I said, you had Dick Gregory. Then you had the uh, once he died. Uh, uh, I guess you can't say that anymore. <laughs> Once he bit the dust, <laughs> then you had Judge Joe Brown lying in wait and without delay. Now, all of a sudden, Judge Joe Brown took Dick Gregory's place. Talking about the same shit. Getting you paranoid. Everything's a conspiracy. What is a conspiracy is not a conspiracy. Even though you thought it was one. They're fucking with your mind. They keep picking on black people for some odd reason. Not so much with the white people. Or anyone else for that matter. Wonder what's so important about us. That they have to keep fucking with us and these coon agents don't mind. Once Judge Joe Brown goes, somebody will take his place. Once Polite went, somebody took his place. York went, somebody... They got these... Uh, kooky uh, masons <laughs> lined up. You see they come out with the hats with the star, uh, sun, moon, and star. Space shit. Always talking about aliens. Talking about shit. This is how you cut through all the bullshit. See, they know certain people their minds are not there, so they're going to be thinking man, it could be. That's what they're trying to get you. What could be. Don't worry about what could be. Because Superman could be. You got to go by what is and what is not. Superman is not. So there's no could be. So you talk about outer space. Uh, aliens came. You see that Pizza Hut commercial with the, at the end, the girl with the elf ears. And you're like, what's that all about? Brainwashing. All this alien type shit going on. Speaking of that, I've been getting to those Star Trek movies too, those old ones. I'm on part four. I guess I got three parts to go and then I get into the next generation one. I already saw the other kind, the, the newer ones. Uh, but that's how they do it. Mass brainwashing, constantly fucking with our minds. <clears throat> but as long as you don't let them... Tell you what to do. You just got to think about what makes sense and what doesn't make sense and what is real and what is not. When they tell you about flat earth, aliens, 
uh, Malcolm X got a shot from above. Farrakhan is, uh, didn't have nothing to do with, uh, Malcolm X getting, uh, dealt with. Tell them to prove it. When they don't want to hear what you have to say and they just want to dictate, they're lying. Bottom line. When you ask them to prove it, you know they can't because they're lying. That's why they make sure that people like me are kept far away. That's why Sa Netter wants to make sure that I can't even attempt to go on his show. You know, now that I think about it, I'm thinking I did make a video before this because I was talking about when I was on Reggie and he let me slip on. So I'm going to check the uh, files. I probably didn't put it on because I didn't have the uh, software put on. So I got to see, see what that one was. So if that's the case, I probably put that on. I don't know. You know how it goes. When I'm in the zone, I put them on right. But when it's whatever, they get on whenever. <laughs> so, uh, I was going to come with some new graphic arts and shit. But like I said, I didn't put my fonts on. Uh, oh, that's another thing I, I, I had to make mention of, too. You can tell who the coon agents are who are sponsored by people because they got people making their uh, their cover art. Because they the team makes the cover art to attract people. So the so-called talent or the propagandists can concentrate on the propaganda and then they tell them what they need to say or want them to talk about. That's why you have people always talking about small hats and this Hamas shit. Now Michi X went in because I did manage to check her uh video extended video out. And I kept thinking to myself as she was talking, why is she on the Palestinian side like that? You go to any store with Palestinians, they don't give a fuck about you. When I was in college, I met a Palestinian. Again, I was in my whole tep, uh, uh time period. And I was thinking to myself, I got to hook up with these people. Hooked up with the guy. And all he was talking about was Palestinians this, Palestinians that. He didn't give a fuck about no black people. He didn't give a fuck about me. And he was dead serious about that Palestinian shit. And after a while, I said, man, fuck this. I'm tired of hearing this shit. <laughs> that's, how I was. that's how I get, man. I'm like, that's how you see why I disappear for a while, man. Because <laughs> after a while, I'm like, man, I'm tired of hearing this shit. So I left him alone. I said, this guy ain't no real Arab anyway. Motherfucking Ottoman Empire. Motherfucker had this shit, man. They, they, they don't even deserve to be there. So I can give it two shits about all that shit. So that's another thing. I've been seeing quite a few small hats around lately. And you know how Tariq Nashi, I know he was listening to me because he mentioned Harrison Ford being having been a small hat. So I know when they listen, I, I, I keep my ear to what they're saying. You know, you know, the only person bringing that shit up was me. I told you how to identify small hats. And that's another thing before I let this go. He always has these so-called white supremacists up there and they keep pestering him about small hats, but that's his test because these people that call up, I could tell they're small hats and they're just testing his, his, his black ass. Make sure he doesn't say the wrong thing, but they give him a little bit of leeway to make it look like he's trying to critique them, but he can't go against them. So that's why he never lands their plane. He might try to superficially do it after about a half hour of talking. But let somebody black come on talking about some real shit or they talk about the small ass. I got to land your plane. He keeps landing the plane because he's looking and waiting for them to call up. That's why. Think about it. What white person is thinking about Tariq Nashi? What white person heard of Tariq Nashi? Why would they be calling him up talking to him? You know it's a bunch of bullshit. 
a few of them attempted to come talk to me, but I know how to handle them. Say, I don't do like Tariq Nashi. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, sir. All this kind of shit. None of that baby shit. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to call them motherfuckers and all that kind of shit. But let me get to the point. Tariq Nasheed is a dimwit. He doesn't understand the lies that they tell. Even though he probably is not authorized to expose anything or because, you know, he's a dummy. But I pay attention to everything they say because I know the lies that they're telling. So they can't pull that shit over on me. See, when black people like telling lies, they like uh, screaming and yelling trying to make you forget about the topic white people they get slick throwing a, a word or two so it's like a lawyer you change one word in a contract however so slight it changes the whole fucking agreement that's why when you read over contracts you gotta go by every word and every sentence because they're so fucking slick They'll throw one word in and then and then if they think that somebody's smart enough, throw some Latin shit in there. <laughs> and that'll really get you. But that's what they do. I kind of got fed up with it because they're not changing their stance. The white man has more money than I have. I can't pay anybody to do what I want them to do. Nobody's paying me. You, you just kind of you don't want to say you got to go for yourself, but goddamn, after a while, it's like, shit, black people can't get together. At least we got to get together with your family, start building like that. And we got to do something about these coons, man. Because if they're drug addicts, thugs, ex-cons, they're never going to stop getting the money from the white man, the coon out. You should know this shit by now. Pan-Africans are all full of shit. That's another thing. I got tired of talking to them, too. You prove shit to them. And you even disprove what they're doing. And all of a sudden. They stick to the same story. Some of them saw the shit going on in Sudan. They claim they hate Arabs. And they're not down with Arabs uh, trying to take over Africa, but then. When Sudan happens, all of a sudden they want to call the people Africans now. But yet they don't want to call the Somali African. Even though Sudan and Somalia are both in the Arab League and the Sudanese speak Arabic. And a lot of people don't know it, but the South Sudanese speak Arabic too because they were all one country at one time. That's why the Arab League invited South Sudan to join. Uh, matter of fact, I think I did make a video because I commented on that Somali shit being fake with that girl. Damn, I guess I ain't post that shit. I guess I'll have to look into that. Probably put that up at another time if I uh, and put the date on it. Uh, but anyway. I'll uh, see what I do. Once the topic hits me, I'll see what I do. So with that, I'm out.